Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining us again for another installment of our Wine Wednesday virtual wine tasting. Today I'm joined by Cindy and Kim over at Blue Mountain Wine Crafters in Funkstown. Say hi. Hi. Hello. We're going to have a great chat here in a few minutes with, uh, with the team over there. We've got some great wines on the lineup. And uh, we're really looking forward to getting some questions from you out there watching us. And we hope that you will engage. Uh, the first couple things I want to let you know about before we get started. Maryland's wineries are open for business. You can schedule curbside uh, pickup. You may do carry out and you may do delivery with many of them. And uh, there are several of our wineries throughout the state who offer direct to consumer shipping. So please don't hesitate to check out what your favorite winery has to offer to get you wine that you're looking for. I also wanted to take a minute to let everyone know that this Friday will be the second open local wine night. Uh, this was put together by the Cork Report earlier this year, right after the start of the COVID-19 uh, crisis. And it's a great way for people across the country to celebrate with local wine by sharing on social media that they have opened their favorite bottles of local wine. And we invite you to do that this Friday, the 22nd. Uh, use the hashtag open local wine when you are taking pictures of your great wines and share them with the world. We look forward to seeing what you have. And then the last thing to remember is that uh, this is Memorial Day weekend, and Monday, Memorial Day, is also National Wine Day. So while you're making your plans for the weekend, suggest that you uh, check in with your local wineries, see what they have available, and uh, get your hands on some Maryland wine and share that with the, uh, the rest of the folks out there as well. Well, without further ado, I would like to start chatting with Cindy. They've got a wonderful business in uh, Funkstown. I'm really intrigued to learn more about it. And I think you all will find this to be very entertaining. Don't forget to ask your questions in the comments, and we look forward to it. So, Cindy, tell me all about uh, Blue Mountain Wine Crafters. What are you guys all about? Well, we're just a small town, and it's um, it's a little winery that offers a lot of small town charm. And we make a lot of different wines, but we are gravitating more toward um, having all Maryland grapes. It takes a while for that to happen because when you're small, it's hard to get grapes unless you're buying them by the ton. So we make anything from dry reds, dry whites, sweet whites, sweet reds, um, lots of fruit wines, and we even make some meat. So it sounds like there's a good breadth of uh of wines in your portfolio. Do you stick with the same varieties and the same kind of releases with the fruit wines over and over? Or do you have some variation in those annually, depending on what you're, you're interested in or trying new things? Yeah, I'm all about trying new things and blending things. Um, we had cranberry at one point. I have an uncle that lives up in Cape Cod and I got fresh cranberries and we tried that and that went over very well. Um, you know, we, we, we partner with 78 Acres that's in Smithsburg, and they grow a lot of fruit. One of our favorites to make is plum wine. Uh, we will be releasing that probably in the fall, and that comes out so great. I just try all kinds of things. I've even got a locust blossom going, and I'm contemplating doing some dandelion next year. So we're always trying something. Does floral or, or flower forward wine, does that do very well for you? Um, we've not sold any of those yet. We're trying okay. to get approval still for our label. But yeah, we, we have a wine club because we are a home brewing and winemaking supply store along with Make Your Own. We have a wine club that consists of wine makers. So it's really fun to get together with them because they always will bring things in. We've tried anything from onion wine, garlic, pawpaw, which is another thing I'm going to try next year. Um, We've had such like tea, wine made out of tea, wine made out of coffee. And these are all people that are home winemakers and that's where I started. So it's always fun to get together with them and try what they're making. And you never know what's gonna make a good wine. So you brought up Blue Mountain Wine Crafters is a homebrew supply, winemaking supply and uh, make on premise facility, right? right. So yeah, you can. You can you share kind of how your passion for making wine at home spurred you to operate a business like this? Because that's very unique in Maryland. There aren't too many places doing all of that. That's pretty much where it started. Um, I was a dental hygienist and I always have loved science. And I met a gentleman that made wine. He was making dandelion wine. 
and peach. And I tried both of them. I didn't like the dandelion, but I liked the peach. And I loved the whole science behind the fermentation. So I searched out the store um, Cracked Cork, which that is the store we ended up buying in 2014, right at the end of 2014. And we became a home brewing wine making supply store, just taking that over. And then I knew we wanted to have a winery. I just didn't know very much about how to go about it. So we started the process in 2015. And then a year later, um, we had the winery um, licenses in 2016 is when the winery became a winery. And then about a year later, we moved to this location because we outgrew that so fast. And then, you know, we offer the make your own here. And I've met so many nice people. I've met some of the staff that we have here through that. Um, the guy that made these, these little flight boards, He's, I met him making his own wine and he's a woodworker and he has um, a wood, he does wood burning. So he put the hawk on the board, um, but it's, it, you can make wine, beer or cider. We have to use kits to do the wine and the cider because it has to be done quickly or it will tie up our equipment too much. So in six weeks, they have their wine, they get to come in and do all the steps. And then we have a lot of labels that they can choose from. And we help them create their own label. And we've done some for weddings and birthdays and all kinds of things. And if you brew beer, you know, we, we, we can create a recipe for you. But, you know, we also have the Brewer's Best kits. And you can, it takes about three hours for that trip to brew. I have another person that teaches that. And you handle um, walking them through the bottling process and all that stuff so that they're able to take everything home with them and be ready to serve it to their friends and family when they get home, correct? Exactly. Yeah, they use our equipment. And then we also sell the equipment here. So if they want to become a home winemaker, they can buy all the equipment and start with the kits. And that's exactly how I started. And then I thought, oh, they're too expensive. So I went and bought just juice out of the grocery store and found out that didn't make very good wine. And then I started experimenting with fruit. And I loved the strawberries. The strawberry is one of the one we'll taste today. It's just delicious. Um, you know, then then I started making some from grapes. I took a trip to New York to the Finger Lakes and I love their whites. I just love the grapey, fruity grapes that they had there. And so I got in touch with a guy that's here and he's he's actually growing some of these New York grapes like the musket, the Valvin musket, the um, diamond, and um, the Niagara, the Concord. So we, we did a wine this year that was called Serendipity. And it was a mix of Maryland, Niagara with Concord. And people loved it. They're still coming back. And it was his first harvest. So, you know, he didn't have very many grapes to share, but people are already looking for that for next year. And so that's those grapes, just people just love them. Well, it's great that you get one for those grapes starting to um, kind of influence maybe what some of the local grape growers are considering putting in the ground and uh, helping to support wineries that want to branch out with new varieties and things that maybe aren't always seen here in Maryland uh, coming from winemakers. Yeah, the feeling that I got when we put Serendipity out, it was just a great feeling in my heart knowing that that was for Maryland fruit. And you're so proud when you can tell people that that fruit was grown in this state. And, you know, it, it's just a really neat feeling. I never really understood it when I started, but then along the way, you know, learning to make wine and, you know, I, I was the home winemaker gone wild, you know. And, and so I learned from a lot of good people, you know, Kevin Ford from Red Heifer, Gary Glocker from Cool Ridge Vineyards, um, Dawn Stein, who worked at Big Cork. You know, some of those people helped me a lot. I would ask them some of the dumbest questions, but they really helped me made more than they realize. Well, I think there's a very common through many conversations that I've had with Maryland makers that the sense of community and the uplifting nature of sharing information about how maybe to uh, kind of dial in on a process or think about how to build a, a wine that is excellent for the consumer to enjoy. Uh, it benefits not only the winemaker who's doing it, but also the ones who are making the suggestion. Because if, if a consumer comes across your wine and tastes it, 
they're more likely to try another Maryland wine as long as they're happy with it. Um, but we, we know all too well that consumers can get a little gun shine if they have a bad experience with one maker from a region or a state or a neighborhood, they may just write that entire uh, area off. And that's, that's a big concern. So I'm glad that you're another winemaker who's seen the benefit of working with your peers and colleagues and learning about, um, you know, even if it is a silly question in your mind, it's something that they've already had to deal with. Yeah, I remember earlier, you know, well, when we started buying more grapes, this year we bought eight and a half tons of Maryland fruit. Um, it was kind of scary to me because we don't have a lot of automated equipment. We had a hand crank crusher to stemmer that my husband put an electric pump on, but it still, you couldn't, you know, we had a hand press and I was like, there's no way we can press the lights. So I talked to Kevin at Red Heifer and I said, hey, would you be interested in pressing our lights? And his wife, Yvonne, said, yes, we would love to help you. She said, we had a lot of people help us when we started. And to me, that was something that meant the world to me. That's really nice. Not only being able to get access to uh, ideas or processes that you may not have thought about, but also to have a hand with some of the equipment that you may need and for people to understand how far that can help you along. So you said you outgrew the original location. Where was the original location? It was just right around the corner from here. And we kept the same phone number. So we still had people calling and they Literally say- Literally right around the corner? Around the corner, yeah. Because I feel like I've gone down, is that uh, 40 there? Yeah. I feel like yeah. I remember going down 40 and the door used to face towards 40, correct? Um, It, it faced the um, Maple Street that it was okay. on. And it was this little tiny garage. It, and it was, when you go out our back driveway where we have our winemaking area, it's on the left. So we live in a small town, so you get to hear fire trucks a lot. Sounds like you've got some good action happening there. I live in downtown Frederick, and they pass me all the time, so we may get interrupted again by emergency services. Yeah, yeah, they come by here all the time. The, the man that lives upstairs, he was the retired chief of Hagerstown Fire, and he comes by all the time because he owns fire trucks, and he's always beeping going by and giving us rides on the fire trucks. So. Yeah, well, now you may need to start doing some wine delivery from a fire truck. Yeah, that would be nice. That We might have to take that. I think that's a, that's a great idea. He'd love that. All right. So um, how many wines are in your portfolio right now? It kind of ranges, 25, wow. um, give or take. You know, some of them are very tiny batches, and when they're gone, then they're gone. We have started doing something where once a month we release something special, and we put a little special label on it, and that has gone over great. People look for that. We also do pairings where, like, in, in April, we did a jelly bean wine pairing, which this year we couldn't do. Um, that Girl Scout cookie one in March. So we try to do pairings, and people love that. They just are always looking for it. Your friend, uh, Bobby, you guys are doing a great job there, and it's nice to have you in town. Yeah, Bobby loves the Chardonnay, and her husband, Regis, they, he loves the um, Cab Franc. They always look for those. But Bobby likes the Saval Blanc and also the Chardonnay. She's a dry drinker. She tasted our 19 Chardonnay, and she said that's like a California Chardonnay. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, that was that's nice to hear. Crazy. Yeah. So I, I'm intrigued because I heard Girl Scout cookie pairings. I know that that has become kind of a thing to do seasonally throughout the state. I've seen more than one winery do that. Mm -hmm. uh, what inspired the idea of doing unique pairings like this, just to kind of expose people to more opportunity for thinking about how to select and drink wine? Or was that, was there something behind the Girl Scout cookie specifically? Well, we started in February and we did the chocolate wine pairing. And then we were trying to figure out what to do for the next month because people were asking us to do them every month. And March was the Girl Scout cookie wine pairing. And we actually had a Girl Scout come in and ask if we wanted to buy any cookies. And we're like, yeah, that'll work great. And then the jelly bean one, people love that one. The jelly beans, the gourmet jelly beans. So like if you got um, the coffee jelly bean and paired that with the red wine, people went crazy over that. So we were sorry to miss that in April. Maybe we'll bring that out later. All right, so the jelly bean pairing sounds awesome. I've seen people do Halloween candy pairings and things like that. I've seen beer and donuts paired. But jelly beans and wine, I think you've just found a, uh, a new convert. I'll be there for that one. 
Yeah, we, we do a lot of sweet wines. Um, we do have our dries and people come in looking for those, but it seems like a lot of people like the sweets. And and I'm I started more as a sweet drop, sweet drinker for wines, just because I like those um, the diamond grape and the musket grape, and they're just grapey and sweet. But then you know I gravitated more toward the whites, a little more crisp. The reds you have to have a steak and be, you know, in the right mood to have that one. We have some uh, right now. One of the comments is a question about where people can find Blue Mountain Wine Crafters wine. Is it only available at the winery? It is. We have the wholesale permit, and we do have a little bit at Benny's to go, but we do sell a lot of it. And since it's not huge batches, we, you know, we try to not have it in a liquor store when we can't have, you know, because if we run out here, then they have to go to the liquor store. So we try to keep it around here. We're working on maybe trying to get the shipping permit and starting a wine club, but but that's you know that's something for the future. A lot to keep track of and. It's, it's just a small business run by my husband and I and Kim and Kathy, or our staff. So it's hard to keep up with it all sometimes. So for the viewer, <laughs> make a trip out west. Come visit come visit the fine team out here in uh, in Western Maryland, and they'll be more than happy to take care of you. And you'll love the Antietam Wine Trail. There's a lot of good wineries and a good variety. So it's fun. They're, they're not too far apart, so you can take a weekend and do all of them. So before we talk about the wines that you selected to talk about today, uh, you mentioned some of the more unique ingredient wines that you've seen having the, the the winemakers and the hobbyists come through and do things. You mentioned onion, you mentioned dandelion and flowers, which is kind of what started that conversation. And uh, Kevin Addicts just mentioned in the comments, and I forgot about this, but at Weird Wine, I feel like we tasted a tomato wine of yours. It did yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, and that was. Kevin just mentioned that it was uh, it was lovely and could have been confused for any dry white, but that wine was phenomenal. And when we passed that around the office and everybody was talking about this being a tomato wine, we were really blown away by how well executed that was and how it really didn't meet any of our uh, initial expectations. So, yeah. I, I have two bottles left here. <laughs> I'm really curious what the onion wine must have tasted like. Well, I'm kind of a plain Jane, so I didn't like it. A lot of people that tried it, they said it would be good to use for cooking. Ah. That and the garlic wine, two of those. They, those were good for dressings or for marinades. I'm not sure I'd ever try to sell something like that here, but who knows? You never know what I might make. You may have a gourmet <laughs> over there, huh? Yeah, you never know. There you go. All right. Well, I already think from the comments that you guys have a bunch of traffic coming your way. People are excited to come out there and uh, see what you're doing. It's fun. It's a, people walk into our winery and they feel like they're home. It's it's like an old house in here, and we have a gift store that you can buy all kinds of wine goodies and and it's just I don't know. It's like we already know them. It's homey. People tell us that all the time. That's lovely. Mm -hmm. Are you allowed to operate the? brew on premise and the winemaking on premise right now, or has that all been uh, kind of curtailed by the restrictions? Um, we helped, we, we bottled the, the wine for the people that had it in the process and then made their labels over the phone and then they picked it up, took it home and labeled it. Right now we're on hold with that, but we are open because we have the store. So right. people can come in and grab bottles of wine and they can buy their supplies and stuff. And some people have even paid and reserved for their winemaking because they love it so much. And we've had people that have made like six and seven batches when they're ready for wine. They're like, come on, let's make some more. Well, they know that they're ready uh, as soon as they get started. If anybody is uh, listening out there and is interested, knowing that you can reserve some space ahead of time sounds like a good plan. You've got Father's Day around the corner. We just passed Mother's Day. Maybe you own, owe somebody a nice gift. Maybe that experience would be something worth sharing. Yeah, and gift certificates. A lot of people buy the gift certificates. All right. We well, a lot of brewers that come in here. And at first, when everything happened, people were going crazy. They were coming in here, buying up the yeast and buying up, you know, all the supplies they could get because they wanted to be able to still brew and make their own wine at home. The, the kits were flying out of here. I think I put more orders in throughout this pandemic than I had in six months. So, well, I guess. Been crazy. Yeah. It's been crazy. 
So we do call this a virtual wine tasting. You showed me an awesome looking flight of wines that you had prepared for today. Oh, uh, you told us that you had a, a regular who made those awesome tasting paddles for you. So that's cool. I like that we're bringing in that sense of community. Do you want to talk about the wines that you have there? I know you guys just had a really big media uh, clash with the uh, Maryland Strong Vidal Blanc, and I believe that that's the first one you were going to work with, right? We were on the front page of the Herald Mail, and we're trying really hard to get a bottle of this to Governor Hogan. It's a great story if you can look on our Facebook page and find it. It's really it, it, it kind of developed this, you know, the Vidal Blanc, they talk about it being the Maryland grape because it grows so well here. And we were just sitting here and bottling it and talking. And, you know, we were, they were talking about opening the state back up in the, in the Maryland um, strong road to recovery. And we were like, let's make a label for that. And then we start talking and said, let's get flags for it. So, you know, we, we come up with the Maryland, Maryland strong Vito. Vito Blanc, and it's the 2019, and it's a it's a great 2019 was a great year for grapes. So this one, this one's been going crazy. People are buying it that don't even drink. People that have kids graduating from uh, University of Maryland and getting it for gifts. They're asking if they can get lights to put in the bottle to save it, and they want the rubber band so that they can keep the flag on it. But it's um it's a crisp, fruity, delicious, aromatic wine um nice and clear it's got floral notes um it's just it's it's just a great it's a great wine it's good good and dry but it also has the crispness and the fruitiness um cheers it, this is a great wine i've always loved it all i do a sweet last year we did a sweet and a dry so people could have either and i think the dry sold more but um, this one, this one's even drier, so it's it's great. Good morning, Kim. Come taste. With us. Kim's gonna taste with us. This is Kim Cooper, my right, my right hand girl. Hey. Now I'm in front of you. Two people drinking in front of me instead of just one. Yeah. Cheers. Uh, yeah, this is a great wine. Yeah, we love it. We've had comments. People coming back to buy more. I think we produced. Shannon Gaines in the uh, comments says that she's enjoying it right now as well. So yeah, that's wonderful. Shannon. She's a good customer. The other girl that works with us, Kathy, Shannon worked with Kathy and we found Kathy. She was retiring. Her boyfriend came in and bought her everything. He bought her a one gallon wine making, all the equipment to do that, a six gallon wine making, all that equipment. And then she came in to make her wine and we loved her. So she retired and I said, hey, would you ever consider working here? And she didn't even get to her car. She came back in and said, I'll do it. So Shannon's a friend of hers. That's how we met Shannon. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. So it's a little hometown here. On our list Diane, I comment to answer your question. Uh, sorry, there was a little bit of an audio cutoff there. Uh, we were talking about where Blue Mountain Wine Crafters wines are available, and they are only available at the winery right now. There are a few bottles at Benny's to go in Hagerstown. Uh, but the winery is the best place to find them, and they're located in Funkstown, and you can find them very easily. Tuesdays, that used to be the day we were closed. So we've been working that day, and I think we're going to continue. So we, we're we trying to be open seven days a week. So even on the days when people are traveling through, they say it's hard to find a winery to go to on Monday and Tuesday. So we do get a lot of traffic on Mondays. So Tuesday will be another day that they can come. Build it and they were That's right. That's right. That's right. Yep. All right. So our next one is the 2019 Chardonnay. This one is the one Dr. Bobby said is like a California Chardonnay. It's very crisp. Um, we did put it in very neutral oak, but you really can't taste any oak in it. So it got nice and smooth from the barrel, but it's also is good and crisp and and uh, fruity. And the alcohol on that is a little higher this year. Um, this one came out at 12 and a half percent. So that's, we have the hawks on our label. Tell you a little story about the hawks. My dad was a wildlife rehabilitator and he rescued a blind red tailed hawk and the hawk survived. And in order to keep the hawk alive, it could not go back to the wild. So we kept the hawk alive and then 
he got his permits to be a wildlife rehabilitator and then to teach. So he went all around Maryland teaching about raptors, birds of prey. So we're, we're working on making more labels. We have a, a barred owl on a label and we have a red tailed hawk. So we're going to try to continue and maybe do a screech owl and a great horned owl and a kestrel. Those were the birds my dad had. So I always have a spirit here. And we actually had some red shoulder hawks nest right at the end of our driveway where the old shop used to be. And they've raised, they raised three babies last year and now they're nesting again and they're always calling to me. So I go out there and I watch them and it's kind of neat to have my dad's spirit. He would have loved to be here helping any way he could. So that's a little cute story about the hawks on our labels. <laughs> Winery that we have this really big undercurrent of the value of family as part of the winery and, and even your, your wine club members and your customers become part of your extended family on a regular basis. It just makes everything feel a little bit more connected. It's not just a, a business transaction. When somebody comes in to get the wine, you get to share your story with them and you get to make them part of your story going forward. So. Yeah, we, we have a wine called Sia Sangria and, and that wine is, um, we were in Alaska a few years ago and we were on a boat and the boat actually hit a rock and it did sink and we were saved by these people. And the name of their boat was Sia. So when we got home and you know, realizing we survived something that, you know, they say, you know, Alaska boat accidents never turn out that good. Um, we named our wine after them. And then we made a, had somebody make a soap and put a picture of their boat on it and an angel in the clouds. So, People are always looking for the Sea of Sangria, and that, that's just the coolest tribute that we can do to the people that saved us. And it's funny because last night we got a, an email from one of the people that was on the boat, and it was so weird how we were getting ready to do this podcast, and I said, I'm going to talk about Sea a little bit. But that's that's when a lot of people remember the story, and they come in and they say, I want I want that wine that has the, from the boat people that saved you in Alaska. So that, that's just kind of a throw in. Cheers. Yeah. Aaron, Mike, Mike Clasby. Those are the people that saved us. Well, I hope you guys are watching. But this is, a, this is great. Like these little stories are the things that make the difference, you know? It, it makes your wine special to people and it makes it easy for them to remember, obviously, if they can recall that story and say, hey, that's the one that I wanted. And obviously yeah. you're making a great wine if they want to come back for it. We tell the story about it and people get tears in their eyes and, and chills. And chills. <laughs> I still get chills when I tell a story and life's short. You never know what tomorrow is going to bring. So you got to live every day to the best. And with the winemaking, I'm just like, let's make some more wine. Let's create something different. Yeah, Cindy's always open. <laughs> I come to her with, with whatever, and she's always open, open to new ideas. Yep. She's well, got a lot of good ones. I was glad when I brought her on. She's keeping me sane. <laughs> I think we're both keeping each other sane <laughs> right now. Yeah. Hey, sanity, sanity is a good thing to share. It's been fun. I've been taking pictures all along the way, and I'm going to make a memory book to have in the winery of all of our adventures of what we've been doing in here and the funny stuff that's you know, when we make a spill or if we overflow something or whatever, but we've been taking some funny pictures, all the boxes of wine stacked up because we don't bring in a bottling truck. We do it all by hand. I finally bought a four head bottler. So we now fill four bottles at a time, but we still hand cork them. We still hand label them. So you're never done. I think Kim's kind of realized that never. She always likes to have everything on the list checked off, but never happens here. There's always more, more labeling, more bottling. There's always something to do. Kim and I have, <laughs> have uh, check marks listed next to every item, but <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the list just keeps on growing. Right. Yeah, right. The, the loose ends kill me sometimes, but <laughs> she's learned a lot. She's learning how to check pH and you know how to figure out you know these sulfite levels in the wine and all this fun stuff. So yeah. it's kind of fun. That's I'm great. sure there's That's lots great. more. I need to go visit Gary Blocker and learn some more, though. I feel like I, there's more to learn. There's always more to learn. I, I was having a bottle of Gary's wine the other day. I somehow got a bottle of that, and I sent him a picture of it, and I said, 
enjoying your wash with dinner. And he, he wrote right back and he says, we need to get together soon. I, I miss our talks. So we're going to get together sometime after all this. And you guys are very close. So. Yeah. Yeah. I keep bugging him to sell me grapes, but he never has any to sell to me. He's already got them all promised. So that's okay. I have a good grape grower. I just want to buy a few little things. My grape grower doesn't have, but that's okay. <laughs> It'll happen when we die. Yeah. If I was 20, I'd be planting them myself, but can't do that too much. Kevin told me that one day. Kevin Addicts, he says, you don't want to have a vineyard. I think he was trying to tell me, get the winery down pat, and then you'll realize how much work it is. You need a whole army to do all that. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So back to the Chardonnay. So it's um the green apple, it's mineral, a little bit of pear. It it really grew great in 19. I'm sure everybody's wine in Maryland the Chardonnays are great. But I did get word from our grape grower that there was a little damage in the Chardonnay in the upper block. But he said he thinks it'll be okay. It's just a small amount. So we were we were damaged by a little of the frost too. I'm sure there are people that have a lot of that. So cheers to the Chardonnay. Cheers. It's been a while since I tasted all these. One of my favorites is the next one, the, uh, the strawberry. And just to pause, I'm the uh, tasting descriptions from your website. For those of you who are viewing, uh, if you want to go to bluemountainwinecrafters.com, you can view the shop there that has these wines listed with pricing, tasting notes, and pictures of the bottles. The artwork's great. The birds look awesome on the artwork. Um, so, yeah, take a look there. Get yourself all of the details that you need for the wine. And can they order directly on the website for pickup in the winery? Yeah, you can go to the shop wine page on our Facebook, I mean, on our website, and it'll send us a message that you ordered it and we'll fulfill it. You'll get an email to come pick it up. And we can deliver. We just try to keep that kind of close since it's just us here. Some days there's only one of us. So you know, we've done a few deliveries. Also, so that's been a nice addition. Until you get the yeah, yeah, that's right. All right, so you're moving on to the strawberry wine now. Yeah, the strawberry. Um, this was one of the first fruit wines I made, and I find it a little easier than, say, peach. Peach is very difficult to make to get it to clear. I don't like to filter our wines unless I have to because I, I think it takes some of the flavor out. So this one's unfiltered. 2019, we did filter a little bit. It's just sometimes sometimes you have to. But this is just like, it's like when you buy your local strawberries and you eat them right off the vine and they're just so fresh. I always ask the grower to get them to me when they're very, very ripe. I don't want them to be hard at all. I want them to be able to be smushed and you get that nice dark red in your hands. But this is just delicious. It's sweet. It's just like a fresh strawberry. I love this one. This is, I do it every year. I, I love strawberry. There's a lot of people that come in looking for it every year. and It always sells best this time of year because the strawberries are in. Well, reading that description, it's nice to see that there is that tart note there because I think a lot of people may uh, think of fruit wines and always think that they're overly sweet and potentially cloying. So knowing that there's a little bit of tartness there to dry it up on the palate is probably very pleasant for, for more people to be able to enjoy that wine. Yeah. And I always tell people if it's, if it's too sweet, then make a sangria or, you know, you can always do something with it. You know, we, we always, we're always blending something. That's another thing we do that we came up with this year was a drink of the month. We found, you know, we blended a couple of our wines together or we, at St. Patrick's Day, we bought the little rock pops that are green and you'd get a, a white wine and you get the little rock pop in it. And when you circle it around, it would turn your drink green. So instead of drinking green beer, you're drinking green wine. So, you know, we always come up with a drink of the month too. And sometimes we'll do the blend where there's a sweet blend and a dry blend and we'll use strawberry in a lot of those. And if you mix it with a dry white, it's great. Or even a sparkling. Yeah. Yummy. Well, it sounds good. Yeah. 
All right, so our next one is, is big news. This is coming out Friday. And this one's called our Lazy Hazy Days of Summer. So this is another one of the monthly ones. And it comes with little wine charms. I don't know if you can see them. But they're little wine charms that you could use as jewelry. And a little bit of rope that looks like boat rope. And this is a valve and musket. So this is great. This is just a grapey, um, just a nice fruity, grapey, clean sweet. finish. It's sweet and also a sweet wine. We've had people already pre-order that because, you know, they, they just, they love the, the look of it. If you like summer, you like lighthouses, you like the beach, this is a great one for summer. Sitting outside, make it nice and cold. I asked Kim today, I said, which one of this flight do you like the best? And she said this one. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real good one. But I had a second one. I wish you could try this, Jim. I know you uh, like dry. But this I is don't see that on, uh, oh. on the website yet. So yeah, we'll I've been pretty bad about the website. I'm sorry. Keep an eye out for that one. Uh, for those of you who are watching, it'll be popping up there in the next couple of days. Yeah, it is on our, it's, it, you can order it on our um, shop line. It's in there, um, but I don't have it on the Maryland line page yet. I'm still talking to Jim about how to work out the technical part of, I'm not too computer savvy. <laughs> I'm more science. Well, you're supposed to be making wine, not running the computer. Right. <laughs> I know, my husband told me yesterday, he says, you know, if you spent more time in the winery instead of talking to all the people and doing all the fun stuff up there, you probably have it all bottled. I said, I know, but I like seeing the people. And the fun is a lot. <laughs> it means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So those are the ones we chose, but we do have two more that this is the first year that we can do a pairing of the same wine, that we have enough grapes to do this. So we have the 2018 and the 2019 Chardonnay. Chardonnay is a hybrid grape. After looking at some of the other podcasts, I, I didn't really see if anybody else had done Chardonnay, but this is a really neat grape. Our grape grower said he just loves this grape. So we did um, we did the 2018 in oak and the 2019 in stainless. So they're very different. Um, the oak, the oaky one is rich and creamy. Um, it has like a subtle spice to it almost. And then the 19 is um, a crisp, light, apple -y. You know, you get that little bit of acidity in it. So it's really... They're very different. Um, people really like the, the oak one, so it'll be interesting to see. We we have this out, but we haven't had anybody in the tasting room with it yet. It's been out just for a little while. So the colors, you know, the colors are a little different. You can't really see it here, but the oaky one, the oaky one just kind of sits around on your tongue. You can smell the oak. It's more complex. It just kind of lingers. Like when you're drinking a dry red, you get a whole bunch of different feelings on your tongue, a little leather, a little, you know, what the oak does. But but the one that's in stainless, it's just crisp. Kim said she likes the oaky one better. I do. But, but the one that's the 2019 is a little more acidic. So you get that in the back of your throat where the other one you get more in your tongue. Kind of just plays around there. So it's, those are just a couple extras we threw in that we haven't tasted in a while. So it's nice to see how they've developed. So that's, that's our lineup for today. That's excellent. I was housekeeping and making sure that our comments had uh, the update about the summer Moscato coming out on Friday. There's a link in that uh, comment that has, uh, that will direct you to the shop. So you can view all the wines that were talked about today, except uh, are the two Chardonnays both on there? Um, I'm not sure we have the 2019 on there yet. Yeah, we It's so new that it's out. We're, we're, we have to add that one too. Okay. Yeah. Well, so you're we giving people a lot of sneak peeks today. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, we've, we actually just pulled some blackberry out of the tank and tasted that yesterday. The blackberry, don't miss that. That's so good. It's not overly sweet. It's uh, you get that blackberry taste, you know, the real, really nice blackberry taste. And then we also have one called Scarlet, which is a cherry wine. A lot of people get a little, get a little shied off from cherry, but 
I used a little bit of the the um, sweet cherries and the sour cherries this year, so that changed it up a little bit. It actually kind of like the plum; it has a little bit of a spice on the end. The plums we always um, mix as many plums as we can together, but we like the old Japanese plums that give you that that nice spicy. I think Kevin had bought some of the plum, and he loved it. I don't even know if we had it out yet. And he was here tasting one time he came and he's like, this is delicious. <laughs> so that's going to be a fall one. And the peach, the peach came out really good this year too. Sometimes, sometimes the peach, it's hard to get it to clear. Like I said earlier. So we, we kind of let it sometimes be a country wine, but this year we cleared it a little more and sweetened it a little more. So it's, it's kind of like the strawberry. It's like a, it's like a peach dessert. And then, of course, we have the meads, which are higher alcohol. We have a blackberry cherry mead. We took the same blackberries and cherries and, and used some um, clover honey. And then we have a plain orange blossom mead with the orange blossom honey. We've done a locust blossom with blueberry. But when I do those, I only do about 12 gallons at a time, put them in 375 milliliter bottles. Just kind of learning and people, you know, people direct me on what they like and then We'll make it again. It just takes a long time to make me. Are you using uh, heroin and honey? Yes, we are. Oh, well, that's wonderful. Yeah, I even actually got to release the queen in one of the hives. That was a really interesting experience. I got to go. That's really cool. See how they did that. I was thinking of doing a getting together with Lou and see if I can wear the bee suit and go out there and see the, the bees and maybe do. You guys talk about the goat yoga. Maybe we'll go release the queen. There you go. In the hive. That might be a neat little podcast to do. Uh, I have a fear of bees, but I think that I would give it a shot. I do too, but the one time I was there, the bees will not bother you unless you threaten them. Like if you were to pinch them, you know, like put your arm on them or something. But I had a suit on that was completely covering my whole body and my head, so I couldn't get stung. But some people that were there, they didn't care. And, you know, they'd land on them and stuff, but they wouldn't bite them. That's wild. So they'll die. I mean, if they lose their stinger, then they know they're... Yeah. Doctors, so they only they only sting if they're if they're really threatened. So what is the uh, what is the next few months? Let's say everything goes back to normal overnight. What what's the next few months look for, look like for you? Do you just anticipate ramping up with more events there at the winery and bringing more people in to do the the make your own stuff? Yeah, yeah. Um, the flight boards we started putting those out probably right after Christmas. Yeah, yeah, That's and. Awesome. Six months, yeah. So with the regular taste and you get a one ounce pour with the flights, you're, you get a two ounce. So you can sit down and actually enjoy it and, and you know, kind of compare them. So that's gone over really well. I hope, you know, once we get through, you know, maybe having a vaccine, you know, it's hard with the flights actually may be better than doing the tastings where you're pouring for the people. So it might be a little more safer for people talking to somebody about creating masks that uh, have a little flap that has a little grommet so we can have you leave your mask on and drink through a straw maybe. So just some, a couple little things we're trying to do. But yeah, we usually get some music. Um, we've been fixing up our outside area a little better. You know, we had tables out there before, but we've just been working on getting it, getting a little more spread out, put some lattice dividers out there so people can feel like they know they're six feet apart. Um, yeah, it's exciting stuff. I can't wait for people to try some of these wines. And I love to see the reactions when they taste. That's probably why I'm not down in the wine making area. I'm up here seeing everybody's reactions and enjoying, enjoying seeing how much they enjoy the wine we make. Well, that's like the, uh, the icing on the cake, right? You've done all this work to make yeah. this great product. You've put the thought, the effort the time, the money into it, and you want to be able to see the reward of somebody enjoying it. Right. Um, I have to imagine that that, that payoff uh, for, you, for you as a winemaker and for a lot of your colleagues has probably been one of the hardest things to deal with in the last few months. Because yeah. Being able to yeah. see the, the reaction and hear that, that tangible um, feedback right away from yeah. you know, trying your wine. Yeah, a lot of people reaching out saying, when when can we come in? When can we sit outside? We really want to sit outside. Or they people are lonely. They they want to come out and talk. And when they stop into the store to pick up something, we 
you know, they, they call and say, are you open? We said, yeah, you have to wear a mask and you can't really linger around too long. So they, you know, they respect that, but they're lonely. People want to get back together and, and just connect again. And wine's a good way to do that. I think we've all kind of taken for granted how much we truly appreciate one another. And uh -huh. this whole thing, not being around each other is kind of changing a lot of people's perspectives and making people really have a lot more respect for the relationships that they had and uh, the things that they truly valued about other people and the strengths that, that we all share. Is there yeah, any other good news that you'd like to share? Anything else happening that people need to know about? Um, one of the things I just feel really strongly about is to keep it local. You know, we always tell people when they come in, thanks for keeping it local. We appreciate you. I, you know, with all the wineries, I hope people will visit them all, support them all, realize that they've struggled along with everybody else in business. But keep it local. You know, I know Amazon's convenient, but if you need a carboy or if you need something, you know, some grain, whatever you need, bottle wine. Especially, yeah, bottle wine. Keep it local. Be yeah. patient. You know, be patient. You don't have to have it yesterday. <laughs> You'll survive. Well, and that's a perfect segue for me to kind of put a bookend on our uh, conversation and sum up with the fact that this Friday is the second opal, open local wine event that uh, the Cork Report has put together. Their mm -hmm. goal is to get people from across the country to celebrate local wine by opening bottles of their favorite local wines. If you're going to be in Western Maryland in the next couple of days, please swing by Blue Mountain Wine Crafters in Funkstown. Order some wine from them. They showed some wonderful wines today. And if you swing through on Friday, you can uh, pick up that summer Moscato during its release, which sounds wonderful. And uh, you can celebrate open local wine night with, uh, with everyone. And I know that banner says it's tomorrow. It's actually on Friday. Um, so I'll get that updated. But we just want to let everyone know that we uh, value your support as Maryland wine drinkers. Our wineries throughout the state are all very happy that you are showing your support and buying local wine. And we look forward to celebrating with you all in person. Cindy, Kim, thank you very much for a wonderful chat this afternoon. Cheers. Keep and you're welcome here anytime, Jim. Come up and see us. Cheers. All righty. I'll, I'll wear my mask. Don't you worry. All right. Stay safe, Sounds stay healthy, and I'll see you all soon. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.